Green Bay Packers and San Francisco 49ers. This is nine and a half, though. It looks like there might be tens coming again. Um, there are some juiced nine and a halves out there in favor of the 49ers at home over the Packers. 50 and a half is our total. Not much movement on uh, the, the, the the spread or the total here, Stephen. I mean, this was this was 10. It got bought. The tens got scooped up and it just sat nine and a half and has been sitting nine and a half for a long time. It opened about 50 on the total, got bet up to 50 and a half, and it's just sat at 50 and a half. Like not a ton of action here on this one, one way or the other. I actually do have a couple of bets in this one, but I'll let you guys get going. Uh, Packers, 49ers, anything in your account for this one? Well, first of all, it looks like the weather concerns may be much to do about nothing in this game. It looks like around kickoff Saturday night, there's you know a less than 50% chance now of rain, and, and there was never much of a wind concern in this game. So um, that initial movement on the total down for the weather early in the week may be um, uh, not great come kickoff. So um, <clears throat> I am going to bet Niners minus nine and a half here. It's mm -hmm. going to be a smaller bet. It's, it's, again, not huge confidence, but... You know, in my opinion, I think this is a bit of a discount from what this number would have been a few weeks ago. Um, I think 10 is the minimum this should be for the Niners. I think a lot is being put into what we saw from the Packers in that Cowboys game, which was, you know, if, if you've been watching the tape grinders, complete coaching, malpractice, complete miscommunication from the Cowboys secondary in that game, having linebackers line up on wide receivers. So, there's really not much I can take away from what the Packers did in that game coming out in 12 personnel and two tight end sets. The Niners are fantastic defensively when offenses come out in 12 personnel. They're fourth in yards per play. They were third in yards per pass attempt. They were second in rushing uh, yards per attempt. So... <sighs> It's not just that either. It's, you know, the other narrative I've heard is, well, Aaron Jones is going to have a lot of success running the ball in this game. Look at the 49ers metrics by EPA and success rate stopping the run this season. And, you know, on the surface, I think that's, you know, fair. But I think you need to dig a little deeper here. This is a 49ers team that played with the lead a ton this year. There was a ton of garbage time. If you filter out garbage time and my definition of that is when the 49ers have a greater than 80% win probability in the game. So any play, not that the 49ers rush D success rate was actually 13th from week nine on. They were sixth. That's a lot better than if you just look at it surface level and say, well, they were 24th and 23rd overall. And from week nine on stopping the run. So I'm not sure that argument of the Packers being able to run the ball in this matchup with Aaron Jones back is valid either. So um, yeah, I, I think, I think we're getting a little bit of a discount here, even though it is a big number at nine and a half, Matt. Adam, it is uh it's fairly, fairly interesting here. It is a team in the Niners that we know offensively when going absolute truck can hit you with every single angle there is in the book. McCaffrey running McCaffrey out of the backfield. Ayuk on the, on the boundaries, Kittle over the middle, and Debo any friggin' way that they want to utilize him to, to go after you as well. But there is, this defense does have some mediocrity to it. I mean, listen, not like bad at all, but just league average and a little bit of, and a little below league average in a lot of stuff out there. I'm not convinced the Packers can't move the ball on them. What say you? You're basically cribbing my handicap, and I'll tell you how I'd want to go after that particular handicap, because I think what you're saying would lean people toward over, right? If you're going to play over for me, isolate that down to the Niners. I don't want to try to figure out the variance on Green Bay with Jordan Love in his first road uh, playoff game in San Francisco, where in Dallas, come on, guys, like we, we saw, I, I said prior to that game that I really was worried about my teaser because of Mike McCarthy and you know he, he did Mike McCarthy things. Now we're going to go into an environment against a much different opponent uh, going to San Francisco. So I think the ball will move for both of these teams. I'm just not convinced that it's going to lead to points necessarily for Green Bay. I'm not sure they're going to be able to sustain drives and I'm not sure the explosives are going to be there for them against San Francisco. So 
couple ways that I, I like to look in this game. The first, and this might be my favorite bet of the week, Aaron Jones receiving prop right now is 18 and a half yards. If you think about the way that this game is likely to play out, there are so many ways to get the ball into his hands as a receiver that play into the likely game scripts. Let's start with this. If you're thinking that Jordan Love is going to be under a heavy pass rush from San Francisco, then you know Matt LaFleur is smart enough to pull the screen game out and use Aaron Jones in that way. Okay, what if the pass rush is there and it's not a designed uh, pass to Aaron Jones? Will Jordan Love be looking for checkdowns? Then Aaron Jones is likely to be there as well. And if we're talking about the screen game in particular, you can get to 18 and a half on one catch and carry if that ultimately ends up being the way they decide to go after it. So I like that in terms of the ability for the Packers to move the ball. On the other side, you just mentioned, Matt, Debo Samuel any which way. The rushing prop right now is 16 and a half on Debo Samuel. And once again, it's a rushing prop that could get there on one carry. And I don't think it's going to be one carry. I think misdirection is going to be a lot of what Kyle Shanahan is going to rely on in this game against Green Bay and against the defense that has shown that it can be had and that at times has had communication issues. So to me, I want to isolate this game down to the things that I feel really confident in within the offenses, right? I think there is a game script in which Green Bay scores 10 or 14 points in this game. I don't think it's the most likely, but it's enough of a probability for me that I don't want to bet over a huge number that's up at 50, 50 and a half. I don't want to get involved with that, but I would like to be able to isolate down some variables. And if you really feel like you want to get involved with the, the total, I would probably be going with San Francisco, even at 30 and a half. I still think you have to look over on San Francisco because this green Bay defense is not it. It has not been it all season long. And even the Cowboys in the game state that they were in, found a way through the back door with 32 points. And that shows you, I think, that Green Bay's defense is not what you would like it to be in a game like this. I uh, I did go ahead and play it, though. Uh, I played over 50. Um, it is, to me, 49ers scored 30 points in nine games this season. Um, three of those games were without Debo Samuel. Those were the three games that they were on the skid, the three games that they actually looked like a normal football team as opposed to this God football team that they basically did the rest of the season. Um, and then the other one was week 18 in which they didn't play starter. Like, so like four of the games that they didn't score 30 points, one was a throwaway and three were the ones that they were injured either on the offensive line or without Debo Samuel as well. So I expect them to score 30 in this game. I expect them maybe they could even approach 40. And if that's the case, I'm getting 50. And even if the Packers can only muster two touchdowns, I'm still getting there um, with all of that. That being said, I do think that the Packers can go blow for blow here with the 49ers. This is an offense that over the second half of the season, as we mentioned last week, has just been it's been one of the very best offenses in the league. Jordan Love has been one of the very best quarterbacks in the league. And if you break down one of the things about this game that I think is at least fairly interesting, like San Francisco doesn't get a ton of pressure on the quarterback. They're about league average when it comes to getting pressure on the quarterback and they don't blitz very often. They blitz at one of the lowest rates in the entire league. So love should actually have some time and should actually be able to hit some of these weapons that, that have basically come out of nowhere. Right. I mean, we certainly didn't have Jaden Reed and Dontavian Wicks on our, on our radars to start the season, you know, but like that's, that's where we are. Right now, and I just can't argue what I've seen over the. I, I wanted, I was wrong about Jordan Love. I was wrong about this offense. I was wrong about everything. I thought these wide receivers weren't the dudes, and these guys are making the plays. These guys are getting it done. So I played over 50. I also took the 10 with Green Bay. So I'm on the opposite side here of Steven. If I think that they go blow for blow, this goes hand in hand for me because I think if this goes, if they go blow, blow for blow, and the over gets there, then the 10 is going to get there as well for, for Green Bay. Like, I don't see this being just a complete whitewash one way or, or the other, given what Green Bay's offense has been able to do. And again, like San Francisco's defense can be had. Like, this is not an impenetrable defense. They, they can be had for sure. And Green Bay has shown time and time and time again over the second half of the season that they've been able to just go out and, and dissect a lot of these defenses that we thought were pretty good. And so... I did that as well. One other angle here that I will bring up. Um, we saw Green Bay take the ball 
when they won the toss last week against Dallas. We know San Francisco, if they win, they will defer. So any sort of first score in the game, first touchdown score, first field goal, first any first anything for Green Bay might be an interesting angle here for kind of an instant gratification bet because it's very rare that we kind of have a decent idea of who's going to get the ball first in the game. Uh, Matt, I would add into that idea, just keep in mind that if you're someone who's going to play a real micro market like first drive result, you're very likely that Green Bay, if they have the ball first, is going to be starting from its own 25 or 30 yard line and it's going to have to go a fairly long way to get those points as well. The uh, first touchdown scorer market in this game is fairly interesting, and in, which is why it just kind of, if you want to go in and try and and play that angle that there's at least a decent idea of what's going on because you go down four names before you even get to the first Packer. So it's McCaffrey, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk before you even get to Aaron Jones, right? And so it's just one of those deals where the books obviously are, are weighting it properly because it is highly likely that McCurshie McCaffrey is going to be the first touchdown scorer in this game if the Packers don't score on the opening drive. But should the Packers score on the opening drive, then I think there's value basically on any one of these Packers that you're getting. And it's very rare. Like I said, it's very rare that we kind of have an idea of who's going to get the ball first because the 49ers are going to defer and the Packers seem like they want to get the ball and try to not get behind in a game with that defense of theirs that hasn't played very well. So along those angles, I've been kind of just like messing around with some <clears throat> same game parlays on, you know, you can get Packers plus two and a half first quarter, same game parlayed with Niners money line. And that's actually uh plus 149. Um, even though the, <clears throat> the Niners full game money line is like minus 450 right now. So you can get a little bump off of the, off of the Packers first quarter. If you like that mm-hmm. angle, considering they are, in all likelihood going to get the ball first here. Um, so just, I don't know, what, what's your reaction to that, Matt? Yeah, I mean, there's 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 interesting ways to play it. I mean, the, the, thing, the thing that really jumped out to me is just like, if we think they're going to get the ball first, if we think that like on a scripted first drive, they would they, they would be high, more likely to have success than, than later on in the game and all that. Like, Jaden Reed scored 10 touchdowns for the Packers this year, right? I mean, like, the dude scored 10 touchdowns, eight receiving and two rushing. I mean, they gave him two rushing touchdowns as well, right? So, and he's 14, 15, 16 to one to be the first touchdown scorer. So it's like, you could like make your week on the opening drive of, of, of this game. Just, I don't know. It's just, it was an angle I, I thought was worth at least mentioning, right? Like the worth, worth bringing up, but ultimately I like the over. Ultimately I like the Packers to keep this within double digits. So I took the plus 10 on that. Um, what I will say is it's nine and a half right now. I think we'll see a 10 again. I would hold off if you want to play the Packers at this juncture, like I said, there are juiced nine and a halfs out there right now as it is anyway. People, the ca- the, the casual better, the, the general public hasn't even bet this game yet. They haven't even looked at it. So, I mean, when they do, they're going to bet the 49ers. And so with that, I think you'll see some tens flash. You'll just have to get on them when they flash because they'll probably get gobbled up like they did the first time with the, uh, when, when the uh, plus 10 showed up. One more uh, along those lines we mentioned. I said two and a half earlier at our show sponsor, Bet MGM. You can actually get Packers plus three and a half first quarter parlayed with mm. Niners to win the game at plus 120. You can get plus three and a half in they're the first quarter you... with the Packers? Damn. Yeah, they're, le- right. they're letting you parlay those together in a same That's game parlay. All right. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. 